Hello, this is Richard at Beyond Marathon. I'm going to take you through a course preview of the White Horse Ultras, which of course feature a 100 mile, a 50 mile and a 50k event. Of course, here is our event website. Your friends and supporters will be able to watch the event on the track trail system, which I'm actually going to demonstrate the course through to on the day. If they follow this link, it will take them through to this website here where they'll be able to follow your exploits. There are various maps they can choose from, satellite maps and things like that. But the first thing I'm going to show you is, of course, we feature three distances. So if I just highlight these in turn, there is a 50k, which is the green one. There is the 50 miles, which is the blue one notice there are a couple of differences and I'll go through those soon and finally of course there's the red one which is the full 100 mile distance now I'm going to leave all those highlighted for the time being and just take you through everything you need to know so our event start is down here um, right next to the um, Marlborough Skate Park so this is the uh, community little community hub down here and there's kind of football pitches and things like that do not park on the little car park down here um, there are only about I don't know six spaces or something along those lines so you won't realistically be able to get your car in there because residents and other people and some volunteers will be in there as well um, some people do park in uh, park around the surrounding area or park in the town center obviously check um, if you, depending on how long you're staying for that um, you make sure the hours cover it if you're in a paid car park if you are parking um, somewhere one of these housing estates do park considerately um, to the residents um, who obviously live in the area you don't want to disturb them or get any complaints block people's drives or anything like that so we will register you at this location then you're all going to be setting off now initially you're all all three of the routes are going to be heading let me just zoom out a touch you're going in an anti-clockwise direction so we're going up this way so all three of the routes are initially heading through um, Marlborough town center before just as you start to head or reach head out or reach the outskirts you take a right on the public right of way and uh, that's going to take you up uh, along very easy to follow track there'll be lots of you to follow here um, there's a, a race courses and gallops you'll hear you'll see there's lots of those in the area so you'll pass lots of kind of horse training and horse racing areas um, you'll notice at this point here this little green line this is actually the return route so if let me very briefly just turn off the other two uh, so the green line there is the 50k you're going to go this way around and you're returning that same way around so just to avoid some confusion as I go through the description here you are all still following this route in a nice northwestern direction very easy uh, to follow wide track uh, the trails in this part of um, the country are typically very wide either grassy or gravelly tracks assuming it's dry if it is wet some of the big wider tracks can get muddy and churn and churned up because four by fours use some of them there's lots of byways but hopefully the weather will be dry as it typically is and that means um, the ground is pretty hard packed all the trails are really very wide apart from one area which i'll go into a little bit later so you're going to follow this um, this uh, trail right the way around up until this point here. Now I'm just going to very briefly switch on one of the other map types. Uh, actually, no, I'll, I'll show you on this one. Um, as you go around here, you'll go past Hack Pen Hill. Now the first white horse is is actually here on there you're actually going to go past it previously we used to have you dipping down to it but um, it didn't serve a great deal of value other than losing a lot of elevation and coming back up so instead we send you past um, past this and you're on the ridgeway actually I should have pointed out you actually join the big uh, ridgeway path for a little while but you leave it at this point so this is the the big 82 mile long ridgeway path um, you turn left and as if you were to glance back over your head at this point you get a fantastic view of the, the hack pen horse and you're then going to follow the white horse trail and this is all a, a national um, trail so you follow the little white horse um, signs we haven't added, added any extra course marking but you will see from time to time uh, circular little signs with the white horse national trail on there and you'll follow this all the way into broad hinton 
and the white horse trail officially goes that way but we bring you right the way round to the road and then around here and this is the village hall generally speaking we set up outside the village hall rather than inside if the weather is good if it's wet then we may well use the inside there are a few toilets inside there in case you need to use them and um, at this point in time the 50 kilometer route splits away from the other two and I'm going to very quickly spend a minute just explaining about about the 50k route because we have altered this uh, very slightly this year the 50k route previously used to head this way and then it would go across there and go to this point here however we found a lot of people were struggling to find the style there is a style there it is a little bit tricky to find and we don't want people wandering back and forward up and down here um, the only downside of making you follow this road is one of the white horses is actually here which you're, you're not going to see um, this is the broad town white horse actually here uh, but um, it's not the end of the world if you do want to see it by all means uh, you can follow the path through and see it there but if not we recommend just if you're on the 50k course just follow the road round one thing we would like to say is this road is a little bit twisty and bendy so we've brought you off just before this sharp bend here back onto the trail where you'll bend round into broad town itself if you do want to go round this road just be very careful they're not busy roads but you do get some traffic on here of course as, as with anything else so take great care and um, whilst you're on this section if you do want to use that we don't mind which way you go it's the same distance fundamentally right so let me skip back here to the 50 uh, mile and the 100 mile so instead of going out of the checkpoints and heading that way for the 50 k's 50 miles and 100 miles will continue to head up this road and re-pick up the the actual official national trail which heads this way now the official national trail goes straight across this field from past experience we know the farmer tends to grow something that sits around head height might be corn might be anything it might be nothing this year i'm not too sure but um, history tells it's better to skirt the edge of this path because the farmer doesn't really leave uh, the public right of way open he just grows plants straight the way across it grows crops straight the way across it so it's highly likely um, you will want to go um, around the edge of that field just to go across there and shortly after that you'll come across um, you come across some um, kind of uh, ruins and stones and things like that in this area and you'll know um, you once you've gone past them you'll head sharply downhill and come to a little gate here where you're going to take a very sharp left hand turn and this turn will bring you along on the outskirts of these this little thin copse of woods here right the way past as previously mentioned you'll pass the white horse and the broad town white horse which is sitting up there so look out for it take a, a left hand, look at the left hand side and you'll see it up on the hill continue to follow this right the way through to Broadtown and then you can continue then all routes will merge back together and you're continuing along some country lane it's actually a quiet little country lane for a little while and then you dip back onto um, public right of way or footpaths around this point in time now um, depending on how hot the weather is there's um, uh, officially obviously there's plenty of water here at this checkpoint and there's water again at the next checkpoint last year it was the hottest day of the year and um, people were running out run out of some water just because they burned through a lot so we've made a decision this year that if the weather is going to be unusually hot or unseasonally hot it's very likely we will place potentially a manned or more likely an unmanned uh, checkpoint that's very visible on the route for you to pick up and it'll be somewhere around cliff pipod we if, if the weather is generally in a normal temperature then we won't need that but if it's you know 30 30 odd degrees like it was last year we will certainly deploy an additional um, unmanned water station for you to refill your water around about here okay um so after you've gone through clip uh, uh cliff pipod uh, you will continue on to um, again onto Country Road. You then take a right, very distinctive 
um, right at this point in time you're turning off this path be careful you don't follow this road around because actually this ultimately does not lead you to anywhere so if you follow it around and then try to go this way you end up in a farm there are no public right of ways that lead you across so it doesn't do you any favor so please be careful not to miss that you're all going to be using of course the um, the GPX file to navigate from and the white horse trail marker does send you that way as well and um, now this next section let me see if I can put on the Google map um, as you might be able to see here there's lots of crisscrossing trails if, if let me see if I can quickly switch to the satellite map and show you this section yeah here we go hopefully you can see this now um, somewhat ungenerously the local landowner has um, built a um, a motorbike an off-road motorbike course all over here and completely kind of ridden over the path so there are essentially multiple paths heading in this direction it doesn't really matter which way you go just head straight the way across this this is the only bit of path on the entire route which is about four or five hundred meters long which is a bit unpleasant underfoot and, and gnarly even in dry weather um, it's not particularly long uh, but just keep following exactly the same direction and ultimately you will pick up a better defined path again once you get through to here so Certainly when you reach the end of this uh, fence line here, you'll re-pick um, up the main line and you'll be able to follow that through. Let me just put this back on the open street map and rejoin where we were. Um, okay, so um, once you're once you've gone through this uh, mot this motorbike course, you'll be back on the White Horse Trail, and then you could continue just to follow it. You'll come to all these field boundaries, continue to follow the White Horse Trail. Um, the only one place to of note that I found was that when you get to this point here, um, there's actually a, that you you'll come out. There's a great big holly bush here. You do a quick right then left. So look for a great big holly bush. That fence is a tiny little bit hidden. But um, if you notice carefully, the GPX file is a very distinctive left hand turn. That's because you cross the side of the hedge here. Um, so it's possible, you know, to, to go down either side of the hedge that exists. Let's see if I can put the Google map on again just to show you what that looks like. Um, it's not going to play ball. There we go. Yeah, let's zoom into there. OK, so where were we here it is yes yeah, there you can just about see the hedge line there's actually um, a, a tiny little bridge if I remember rightly and a little stream that runs down there so do make sure to cross it halfway down the field it's more difficult to get to the other side of the fence when you get down to this point in here so do try and cross over halfway down then continue to follow the white horse trail right the way through you'll pick up a, um, a farm track again at this point in time and when you get um, to here which is a farm you will turn left and follow this track up and this track soon begins to climb around about this point in time it gets a little bit steeper I say steeper very very relatively it's a it's a very gentle incline there are no serious hills in this part of the world at all so it's a very gentle incline for a few hundred meters then as you can see you are back onto farmland uh, you head long past this first field then turn right and then you're going to be following the white horse trail markers right the way across all of this farmland until ultimately you end up on another little white lane from um, here is is where it turns into a little um, farm track again so you turn right and follow it all the way down um, to Churhill now for those of you who may have done this a few years ago we previously have had Churhill Village Hall as a checkpoint this this village hall now often now tends to get booked out for weddings and things like that which makes it a challenge to book uh, so last year um, we hosted the checkpoint right here which was opposite the white uh, the Churhill white horse which you can just about see there on the Google Maps so again we've opted to use an outdoor CP uh, be very careful when crossing the A4 here it's a very fast road you will cross this again uh, later on as well so just be careful as you um, cross this then you'll see probably two vehicles here and a few tables and you'll reach our second manned checkpoint you will then all have a um, a, a long walk up this hill here there's a few little kind of steps initially and then there's a long pull right the way up to um, the Lansdowne Monument which is one of those needle type monuments can't really see it very easily there let's see if I can bring up a picture no I can't but it's one of those uh, Cleopatra type needle uh, monuments and as you come up you get a great view of the Churhill White Horse 
And once you're on top of the monument, you can either skirt in front or behind it and then follow. Uh, this is like a big drop that you can see that there's a bit of a, a drop here, a bit of a bowl. Uh, you'll follow the edge of this all the way around and um, um, you'll make your way down onto this farm track. And as you walk down, you'll see a, a four by four, a car four by four trail. And this indicates um, there's, there's a byway around here and you do often see four by four vehicles on um paths around here and sadly they don't all they use the rights of way they're not allowed to they're supposed to use byways which which motor vehicles are allowed on but sometimes i've seen them on this stretch they're absolutely not allowed on this stretch but they use it anyway because it shortcuts them through to a, a a section later on that they can use so do be careful if there are big four by four vehicles um, along some of these paths um, uh, even though they're not supposed to be there just step out of the way hopefully you won't see any but you, you never quite know so you continue all the way along here everybody will and then you'll cross the a4 again this is the road you've previously crossed and then you continue across the length of the first field and now it's important to notice the 50 mile route only continues ahead just to make up a little bit of distance to ensure you do the 50 miles so don't necessarily follow anybody um, who's going straight ahead unless you know they're on the same route you are if you're doing the 50k or the 100 miles you turn right after that first field boundary if you're doing the 50 miler you'll continue around there um, you are all wearing GPS trackers, so obviously we can see which way you were going to make sure you've gone the wrong way. And if the 50 miles end up turning this way, you'll end up docking yourself uh, about an hour time penalty. So do be careful not to go the wrong way. Follow your GPX. Ultimately, they all re-emerge um, re or rejoin back together just outside the famous Avebury, little village of Avebury. And... Um, Avebury is famous for its stone circle, which um, actually is covers this entire area and is split into quarters by the the road, the um the quite a quite a busy road which runs the right the way through it. So this is the main high street for the village, and this is the main road which runs through it. So it's kind of split into quarters. Um, if you wish, we don't have any ob objection to any of you taking a trip around all the the wonderful magical stones which sit right the way around the corner. If you feel as though you've got time uh, to do it, feel free to do so we do let you have a little look along here if you want to um, if you want to head back it's as long as it is this way or you can simply come round to the clubhouse now what we usually have is there is a little car park here and the Avery cricket ground and um, last year we actually set up the if the weather is nice we actually set up the checkpoint here in this area so if you don't immediately see a checkpoint um in the at the back of the building here it might just be 20 meters away there so that's typically where we set it up if the weather is good it could well be under gazebos it could well be under a couple of tables and if i know the checkpoint volunteers well who run this cp um they have all sorts of surprises there was i think it was gin and tonic and all sorts of strange and weird and wonderful treats at this checkpoint um so ice baths and all sorts of things like year because it was so hot so um once you visited that um that checkpoint you'll turn on your heels and either go straight the way back around to uh where you came to this point or if, or the 1500 miles if you want to you can see some of the standing stones there you can nip around there it's important to say at this point in time the 50 kilometers are splitting off so whereas everybody else is returning on their heels for a short way the 50ks are turning right and you will basically just head in this direction straight way across and rejoin the route where you um, were out a little earlier retrace all your steps right the way back to the finish and as you can see there 49.8k and that's just the way it's drawn on the gpx i'm more or less certain you'll all click over 50 kilometers quite comfortably so 50 kilometer people if that's all you need to know then um i hope that was very useful to you and we will see you on race day back to the 50 mile and 100 milers so you will come back through avebury um avebury village down the road and then you are going to turn left uh, just um just before um just, just at the edge of the village should i say and head down make your way right the way down to the a4 again uh, cross the a4 with care and then this is another area that that are gallops so you'll see those those railings i'm sorry i'm not a horse expert or a horse racing expert but you see those white railings where they run and train the horses now they do train the horses here on saturday morning but by the time you reach here um, there shouldn't be any 
um, there shouldn't be any horses in there but uh, you're probably running outside the white railings right, right the way around the edge and you will um, run right the way to this point and you do have to exit um, the uh, the field very carefully go about 10 meters along the A361 which is also a busy road and then you will join um, rejoin the White Horse Trail here now this is one good example of where the 4x4 vehicles as you climb up this section have churned up um, this path so um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of these vehicles I'm sorry if you're a big four no I'm not I like 4x4 vehicles I don't like 4x4 vehicles making half meter deep ruts in paths which is what they've done on this here to be very careful of this section you'll have to run to the side you won't be able to run in the middle of the path because these 4x4 vehicles are put to half deep half meter deep ruts right the way up this road um it's easily avoidable and I'm you know over overselling it a little bit but um I guess I'm I'm slightly unimpressed at the way the, the ground has been churned up in this particular section by those vehicles. So you'll travel right the way up this hill, which is a gentle climb, uh, right the way up to this point here. Let me just switch back into our open street map, because I've been on that one for a while now. Um, and let me let me zoom back in. So here we go. You're heading right the way up this hill. You'll see some transmitter um, transmitter. Um, uh, aerials up in up in the distance here and when you get to uh, this point here you're going to turn left it's kind of more or less that more or less the, the summit of the hill Morgan's Hill it is here and you will turn left at this point and then turn left again and again this is all um, byway it's but it's a very very wide track so you will probably see a rutted area where the vehicles drive but it's massively wide and there's a nice area to walk along as well and you'll follow this um, straight the way down crossing the A361 with care again and this is both the um, the Wands Dyke path and the mid Wiltshire way if I remember rightly uh, you'll continue right the way through until you get to our next horse and our next horse is um, along here at Pusey Down um, let's see if I can flip back onto the Google Maps to show you where it is see if it appears up on the map right that's the Alton Barnes at Pusey Downs there we go and you see the little Alton Barnes horse so um, here he is here you'll run past the top of it this is a this will be a hill here you'll be at the top of the hill this is just below you and um this is where the the 50 mile runners and the 100 mile runners will all go right the way down to alton bonds where our checkpoint um is stored and the 50 milers will curse me for what i'll explain to you in just a minute so you're going to go um you're going to go uh, around and follow this track this is a, a busy nasty little Busy, busy section of road so we've brought you right the way around this quiet little lane that brings you around the back of these houses into the coronation hall the coronation hall um we we only use the indoors um for use of the toilets the reason that every year um on this particular day or every every sunday or every saturday should i say they have a hippie drum circle uh, that takes place in the coronation hall so unless you've brought your drums with you you're not going to be able to go in and join in and um, we will usually host the cp from outside but we do have permission to go in and use the loos so 50 milers you will then turn on your heels and then you will look back up this hill which looks quite substantial when you're standing here but remember this is Wiltshire there are no real hills here they're just gentle little grassy grassy lumps that you'll head up it will feel a little bit like a mounting at 40 miles though so you'll head right the way up uh, until you get to Pusey Down car park this is a little car park this car put this cars that park on this side of the road on that side of the road uh, you'll cross right the way through both and then you will um, let me scoot back onto the open street map just to show you where you are okay so um you will shoot right the way across uh here uh, around the outside of these woods and then um what you're going to be doing ignore this red section this is for me to explain to the 100 miles later you'll continue on to west woods which is a which is a um uh forestry trail um forestry england uh, property you'll head through the white horse trail through here so it is a public right of way and then uh you will cross over uh at this point in time here um it is also possible to go through this way 
and cross over there as well it doesn't really matter which way you go now i'm going to try and recall something from a few years ago possibly no longer issue but i do remember the reports of a couple of little foxholes on this on this path somewhere so just do take care in case there's any foxholes especially if it's night time you're traversing this little bit um, as you come through um, past here um, as i say you can actually go through here officially this is the, the White Horse Trail. Um, so you can turn there and turn there. We've kept you on the outside uh, for the GPX just for the purposes of being relatively straightforward, but we don't mind which way you go. It's two sides uh, of a square essentially to, to join up with the same place. Um, you will then make your way back um, through onto the outskirts of, um, of Marlborough and past the final White Horse, which let me just see if I can see where it's going to show you where it is you can't quite see it on here but there is another the marlborough white horse here as well be very careful around here actually then there it is there's the white horse <coughs> um navigation is a little bit tricky so you also may be a little bit tired it looks as though it's straightforward enough but somehow people seem to end up on the wrong side of the fence so just take it easy the reality is if you went that way um it wouldn't really make any difference what you don't really want is to end up on the a345 because that again is quite a busy road so just watch your um watch your uh, trail as you come the way through here um you'll end up on the outskirts of marlborough and then f eventually retrace your steps right the way back through to the finish so that is the 50 miles and also i've obviously just explained that last bit for the 100 milers too but let's go back so if that's uh, your 50 mile route done uh, well done and um, let me now continue with the 100 mile split so after um, Alton Barnes um, you're only going to be on the um, on the on the the road again I think it's for probably about half a kilometer if I remember rightly and then you join the canal here so at Honey Street so you then join the canal and you're on the canal for a long old time so it's going to be a bit of a change in pace um, in terms of no hills it's just almost turn your brain off for quite a while um, turn your brain off but do make sure you uh, don't turn it completely off because there's a lovely um, horse to see let me see if i can find out where it is where are we? okay there so oh there it is the devises white horse now it is absolutely visible here from the canal so as you look across there you'll see another one of the white horses and then you continue right the way through devises which is at this point here um and then you continue right the way through the uh, the town, and by this point you will have had enough of the um, the canal. Trust me. Uh, you bear in mind you're all still on the White Horse Trail at this point in time. I should still point out there are spurs um, of the White Horse Trail, so follow our route. This is especially pertinent from this point onwards because we have modified the White Horse Trail route to make navigation simpler and faster in this section. Um, you're going to make your way um, across, still across the White Horse Trail at this section at this time to pool shop village hall and uh, pool shop village hall actually sits here so it's just a quick little step in and out so it's an indoor checkpoint at pool shots um, where we'll be uh, feeding you uh, and then you'll continue on now from this point onwards we have made some fairly substantial changes to the white horse trail for example that is the white horse trail that is the white horse trail um and there's a, a few other sections as well now the reason we've done this uh, and this is the white horse trail um the reason we haven't take you through there and through here and along here is because um it's very it's, it's tricky to follow we found it to be a little bit overgrown and at night it was a headache to follow so because of the time of night you're going to be hitting this um the volume of traffic will be probably zero they're quiet very narrowish country lanes and trust me even though you might be adding a few hundred meters on here and a few hundred meters on here um, it's substantially faster to stay on the road than it is to try and follow the White Horse Trail across that corner and across that corner. I know it looks shorter. Trust me, it isn't. So do stick to our GPX or we certainly recommend it. Otherwise, if you start trying to head across the White Horse Trail here, it ends up being you know, incredibly challenging to follow. Um, so stick on the road right the way through and eventually you'll get to uh, Steeple Ashton. 
and uh, you'll turn you'll you'll rejoin the white horse trail in steeple ashton for a little while uh, until it leads you right the way through onto the outskirts of bratton and again we we are not taking you on the white horse trail which which goes this way uh, we're taking right the way down the road into Bratton and then this is the um, the Jubilee Hall at Bratton another indoor checkpoint here where we will um, we'll have some uh, refreshment for you food and drink for you you'll then turn on your heels for a few meters and then rejoin the White Horse Trail at this point in time so the White Horse Trail is runs up there technically uh, and you'll rejoin it at this point here and then skirt around the edge of quite possibly um, the the most famous white horse which is the Westbury Hill let me put the sat map on you may not see it necessarily depending on what time of day you get here uh, let me switch to Google Maps um, ba -ba -bom. where's Bratton Camp and look there he is okay so there this is Bratton Camp and this is the uh, the very famous one of the largest horses it's actually made out of um, they've 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 put kind of this isn't chalk this one isn't they, they've actually put kind of white plates down and they paint over it from time to time uh, as they do with a few of the others they either uh, paint the paint the chalk or paint over this these white slabs that they've put there so anyway you're going to go around the edge of the the steep uh, little steep Hill, grassy hill here around Bratton Camp. If you look down, you might be lucky enough to see the horse depending on the time of day. And then um, you're going to be going um, along to the edge of the MOD land. Now, um, what you're then going to be joining is this road. Let me put the open street map on there. Hopefully what you can see um, on this shaded area here, this is all the Salisbury Plain training area um, where uh, from time to time there's live firing. Um, you, you may, if you're lucky, see some big um, 4x4 vehicles, tanks, all sorts of exciting um, activities I'm sure go on down here. And it goes without saying that you're not to go into that area. You may see red flags from time to time along the edge of here, which warns you that there are live firing exercises and things like that taking place. But the the good news is this is actually a massively wide gravel road where you can just turn your brain off and follow it very carefully but you do have to be a little careful when you go around the corner that you don't suddenly go wandering around this road here where you usually see there's some some kind of lookout towers and things like that so be very careful um, when you're on the ember range path here to stay out of the actual ember range itself and remain on this path and you'll stay on this right the way through until you bump into the uh, checkpoint seven urge font. there's a tiny little car park here where we our um lonely volunteer who who services this one will be there doing the graveyard shift in the middle of the night in the outdoor spot um at, at that point here so do be sure to thank our um our volunteer uh, you'll then continue on uh, and finally, you will leave the Ember Range path um, to head through to Charlton St. Peter. So you're going to go down uh, the track here and cross the A342 with care. And then there's a little, um, a little, another little rural section will lead you right the way through to um, the outskirts of uh, Manningford here. And again, you're back. You're all on the white trail. White trail, fairly straightforward. Keep your eyes out for the the, the white horse markers, or you're on your GPX. You'll recross the A345 again here, and then make your way around to the final horse, which is a Pusey. And the final horse is actually here. Now I do have a cheeky little up the hill and back. I'm not going to complain bitterly if you don't go up uh, that or not, as long as you make it to this point in time. But if you want a, a shot of you next to the Pusey white horse. This is the spot to get it. And then you're going to go into Pusey. Um, this road can get a little bit busy once you join it at this point in time here. So uh, just be careful as you um, you go through. More or less as soon as you've entered the town, you're going to take a little left fork. You'll turn right by the scout here and then you're going to locate the Bouvery Hall. And the Bouvery Hall, um, the entrance is towards this side here. And uh, once you've been into the Booby Hall, which is our final checkpoint, um, you're then going to make your way initially along the high street of Pusey, right the way through um, towards, uh, when you get to the roundabout, you take a left and head out through this little housing estate here. Um, you'll pass the train line and then you're back onto, um, back onto rural land again. Uh, you're going to uh, cross the uh, Kennet and Avon uh, Canal 
and um, then let me see if I can find the next point of interest I can so you'll notice as you head up here um, let me see if it shows you yeah that you see this is the giant's grave now then when you get to this point there's a, a fantastic you can almost quite see here there's a semicircular um, semicircular structure it's it's actually a great big hill so you actually climb quite steeply here um, to go up and skirt around the edge of this hill and then go back down again it's quite a lovely little landmark although at 95 miles you um you will be cursing us although i should say i can't claim credit for this it is the white horse national trail so blame whoever set the course um to be fair it's nice uh, anyway so you'll have a, a lovely little semicircle climb right the way around cross uh, the a345 once more and then you're going to rejoin up with where the 50 mile course was and i described earlier you're heading through westwoods and then onto the outskirts past this final little um horse um at marlborough which is the, the the final one the eighth and final one and through retrace your steps back to the finish so hopefully that has been um of use to you all and, and added a little bit of value some things to look out for people ask what kind of shoes they should wear uh, it depends is of course the answer if it's dry then the course is without doubt hard packed and you know do you know what you you could get away with road shoes but generally speaking i'd say no stick to some cushion trail shoes um uh, if i mean if, it, if it's wet for some reason or very muddy uh, you can get put a slightly more aggressive sole on there i'm more really referring to that the longer courses the 50k course um, apart from this one little section through Cliff Pip, just after Cliff Pip Hard, where the, the ground's a bit ropey, uh, the course is very well. Uh, it's very good, and it's on these gravelly tracks for the most part. It's only this little bit, which is farmland, and even that, most of the trail is wide. So your shoe choice, generally speaking, should be very well cushioned trail, trail shoes, and that would be my recommendation. Um, remember, you're going to the Track Trail um, website, which is linked from here. So Track Trail is our tracking system, and you can uh, use that for your own personal challenges and things like that too. But your uh, supporters will click on that link, and it will load this on the day, and you will all appear all on this list. Now, one final thing to say about the tracking link is that there is a leaderboard on here and you can make use of this in some circumstances um, um, once you've loaded the leaderboard there's a drop down for the 50 mile the 50k um, and the 100 mile and depending on which route you're on all of the names will appear down here now note there is a little google maps icon next to um, each checkpoint and if you for some reason as a runner or as a crew member were lost and needed to find your way to that checkpoint um, you could click on this and it will route you via the, the you know the nearest available route on your mobile phone using google maps through to that link now i happen to be up here in shropshire so my route to get to that checkpoint is particularly long but you would be more likely given a, a far shorter route to get through to that checkpoint so that's just a tip for you there um, you or a crew for, for whatever reason could use this to navigate yourself to the nearest checkpoint as a runner that should not be necessary you will be able to see yourself on this route here as well so once you click on the little participants icon all the names of the people will appear on there you could start typing the first few letters of your name or your bib number and you will appear all of the other runners will disappear and just your one solitary flag will appear on the map and you'll be able to see where you are in relation to the course i don't think anyone's going to get lost for a second uh, but um, if you do need to use the tracking link that's what it's there for both for the benefit of you your crew if you have one and um, your friends and supporters at home so i hope you found that very useful and mark who is the race director of uh, cabane events and me i'm richard from beyond marathon look very much forward to welcoming you to the white horse ultras thank you very much <laughs>